Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I'm glad that you clicked on today's video because I'm going to be sharing some life-changing lessons that I learned as I'm going through my trying to conceive journey. It's been a year and a half and counting and I feel like I've learned a lot of things along the way and I'm excited to share that with you. Maybe you are struggling to conceive or you know somebody or you're just interested in hearing what it feels like to be struggling to conceive. When most people conceive in a year or less, there are some of us in that small percentage who take a little bit longer a little bit more effort and that definitely comes with some unique feelings and emotions so yeah my husband and i are in the beginning phases of starting ivf i'm currently on birth control so my emotions are a little bit all over the place we've tried two iuis and they've been unsuccessful i've never achieved a pregnancy ever i've never had a positive test at all so that's kind of our story there we have unexplained infertility there are a couple of different things that could be more ideal but over Overall, um, our doctor doesn't have a specific reason as to why we can't conceive. So we are moving forward with IVF and I'm going to be vlogging that entire journey. So make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you're interested in that content. So with IVF coming up, everybody is telling me to be aware of the constipation and the gut issues that come with that. I actually just spoke to a friend today who warned me again of that issue. So in order to preemptively make sure everything's running smoothly, I have been taking the ritual Symbiotic Plus. It's a prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic. So it's a three-in-one supplement that supports gut and digestive health, and I've been loving it so far, and they are partnering with me in today's video. So I started this a little bit before I started the birth control pill, and if you don't know, birth control is used to regulate your hormones before an IVF cycle. It's very ironic that they put you on birth control, but that's just part of the process. So with introducing new medications like birth control and the medications that I'm gonna be on for IVF, that puts a lot of stress on my body and not only my mental health, but my gut health. I've just been really loving Ritual for that reason. What I really like is that it's a delayed release capsule. So it's intended to reach your colon, not just your stomach because the colon is the ideal place for probiotics to survive and thrive and really make a difference. So it's just one capsule daily and it doesn't have to be refrigerated and you can take it any time of the day with or without food. I personally take it at nighttime when I take the rest of my pills and medications and supplements. It contains two of the world's most studied probiotic strains. So you can trust that you are getting quality ingredients. I stand by ritual. My doctor stands by ritual he's the one who actually got me on the ritual prenatal and i cannot rave about them enough and they actually increased my code from 20 percent off to 30 percent off your first order so if you've been thinking about trying ritual now is the time and it's no risk because if you don't like symbiotic plus within your first 60 days ritual will refund you your first two orders so use my code rachelv30 for 30 percent off your first order it will be linked in the description you guys won't regret it and thank you so much ritual okay the first life lesson that i so graciously learned during this journey is that i I can handle a lot more than I thought. So the first month of trying to conceive was actually one of the hardest months for me. I think there was just so much expectation put on that month and when it failed, I was devastated and I thought to myself, I don't know how people survive this for a year. I cannot imagine being that girl who takes a year or more to conceive. Like I just never thought I could survive given how hard the first month was for me. And here I am a year and a half later and I'm surviving and I'm actually, okay, I was gonna say I'm thriving. I'm not exactly thriving, but I'm surviving and I am not depressed and I'm okay and I'm excited about life. And so I wanna encourage you, if you feel like you cannot handle one more month, you cannot handle one more year, whatever it is that you actually can and God created us to endure life's trials and he gives us the strength that we need every single day to get through that day. Just like the Bible says, not to worry about tomorrow because today has enough trouble in and of itself itself. That is so true. And I think that's something that time has taught me. And I, I don't know if I would have truly, truly understood that if I didn't go through this and I'm still going through it, but God really does walk alongside us through every single step of this journey. And we have so much more strength inside of us than we think. So wherever you are in the journey, just know that you will get through it one way or the other. You will survive and you will have an amazing, happy, and fulfilled life regardless of what happens. And I am by no means perfect at realizing this. I still struggle with the idea of, okay, well, what if I never have children? Will I be okay then? Right now, I can't imagine being okay with that. I, can't, I cannot imagine surviving that, but I know that I can and that I will with God's help. That has been a life-changing lesson for me.
me. The next thing is a little bit more practical and that is that timing really does not matter. I'm referring to the timing of intercourse, the ovulation testing and all of that jazz. It is so tempting to take over control of this journey and to feel like we truly have any sort of control. And the reality is that we have so much less control than we think. And it took me, I would say a year like a full year of TTC to realize this. And my doctor actually told me the same thing. He said, you guys, timing really doesn't matter. You can have intercourse one time, five days before ovulation and still conceive. I actually know several people who have experienced that. So if you are stressing out to do it every day, every other day, even every two days or the day before the day of your positive OPK, just do not stress about that. And I know that's easier said than done, but it really does not matter. That is why the doctors say one year of unprotected intercourse without conceiving equals infertility because timing does not matter. If you are doing it at least once a week, there is nothing more you can do. There is no position, there is no supplement, there is nothing you can do unless you have a very specific um, issue or deficiency. Most of the time there is nothing we can do to change the speed at which we conceive. I wish I would have realized this right off the bat and I wouldn't have fallen for all of these traps on social media or people telling me, my friend did this, my friend took Mucinex, my friend ate a banana right before. <laughs> like truly none of that matters. What truly matters though, and this is my next life lesson, is the people around you, the support system that you have. So this starts with your partner, obviously. The people you surround yourself with and the vibe that they give off around your journey impacts you greatly. So I have had to make sure that everybody is on the same page as to what the vibe is. I communicate my needs to them very clearly and I say, hey, I actually prefer not talking about this or hey, can we talk about this for a little bit, which in that case, I'll just bring up the conversation because a lot of my family and friends are super interested in my journey. So they're usually kind of just waiting for me to bring it up because they don't want to bring it up if it's like a sore subject that day. So communicating clearly with them and surrounding yourself with people who support you. For example, I'm pursuing IVF and fertility treatments and there are a group of people who are against that and who maybe aren't so supportive as I've shared on this journey with you guys so far and i'm so grateful that nobody in my immediate circle is like that they are so supportive even if we disagree on an aspect of it or something like that they are still so loving and kind and i just want to encourage you if you have someone in your life who's super negative and brings you down consider distancing yourself from them for this season it doesn't have to be permanent if if they cannot be on your team if they can't vibe with you during this trying time in your life consider you guys know what i'm trying to say consider distancing for your own sanity. At the same time, another life lesson related to this is that it's not all about me. The nature of struggling to conceive is that it is a long process. This is not a couple of months or even sometimes a couple of years. This is going to be something that you are grinding through day in, day out, month in, month out. And it's very tempting for me to want to stay in that victim mentality and tell myself, oh, well, I'm just down in the dumps. And so my friends need to comfort me. My parents need to comfort me. And it's all about me, 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 me. That is just not the case and your friends and your family also need to feel loved by you and cherished by you because like I said, this is going to be a long journey. Your friends and family may get fed up if we are just super selfish for this entire process. Now, of course, there are especially hard days and hard weeks where they need to understand that you cannot give 100% to that relationship and that is understandable. But at a certain point, you do have to reciprocate. For example, some of my friends and family like to be informed of everything that's going on and they appreciate the details because they are a detail-oriented person and they feel loved when I share that information with them. Other family and friends don't necessarily want to know every detail. They just want to continue our normal connection points, whether that's working out together or uh, meeting up for coffee or whatever it is. Everyone has different love languages and that does not stop when you are struggling with something in your life and it doesn't even have to be TTC. Whatever you're going through, if it's a long extended period of time, you're gonna have to figure out how to overcome your emotions and how to still be a good friend, a good spouse, a good coworker, regardless of what you're going through because otherwise that will just
just lead to frustration and you may find yourself even more isolated if you continue to, and I'm speaking to myself, if I continue to push people away and just focus on my negativity and hole up and, and feel bad for myself, that is not going to be good for me at the end of the day. And we are called to love other people. And so that is definitely the balancing act to, yes, make sure you communicate your needs and your feelings, but at the same time, other people are going through other struggles and other problems and my problem is not harder or bigger than their problem it's just different and so we need to work together on that okay here's another life lesson sometimes things don't happen for any reason now this is definitely controversial and i am a christian i do believe god's providence is here i believe he is the author of life he is in control of everything that happens everything that he allows to happen or not to happen so that is not what i'm referring to but sometimes people especially christians can take something like infertility and over spiritualize it and say well you're not conceiving because you actually haven't repented yet, or you're not conceiving because there's an unconfessed sin in your life or because you know God's trying to teach you something. And I'm not going to say that that is never the case because in the Bible, there are very clear examples of God using infertility for his glory and he uses everything for his glory. But I do not think that every single woman struggling with infertility has a spiritual issue that needs to be corrected before she can conceive. Sometimes I do think it's a medical issue and once you address that medical issue with surgery or medication or whatever the case may be, people conceive. <laughs> this is a touchy subject and I hope it doesn't come across like I don't think God is in control because I am the first one to say that nothing happens against his will. However, explain to me an infertile woman who does IVF first try and then conceives first try. Yes, that is God's perfect timing, but at the same time, there is free will involved. That woman struggled with something she sought treatment from a doctor medical treatment and god allowed that treatment to work and to bless her with a child so i do think that there is a perfect balance that we do not currently understand and i guess the point of me saying this is that when people say oh just trust god's timing god's perfect timing when you hear that phrase every day for over a year that makes you start to like over analyze the phrase and that's where this is coming from i i don't even know if that made sense to you guys but if you are tdc you definitely have heard people tell you trust his timing god's perfect timing it's not his will yet god wants us to overcome infertility he wants us to be fruitful and multiply and i think his heart breaks when his children go through infertility and i think he smiles when we overcome it so that is that the next life lesson i've learned is that your husband will never get it and again, this is a little bit dramatic in the way that I phrased it, but it is true. Your husband, specifically because he is a guy and he is not physically going through it himself, he will not 100% be able to empathize with you. He will do his best and he will carry you on his shoulders and make you smile and get you to stop crying, but he will never fully, fully, fully understand the depth of the pain that I am feeling. And that is okay. <laughs> I think the only people who will truly, truly get it are people who have gone through it themselves and of course God. So giving them grace, giving people grace in your life, being happy that they are not as sad as you. This is obvious, but we should want others to be happy. We shouldn't want our husband to be down in the depths and the trenches with us. And it can be hard because when we feel alone and isolated, we just want someone to relate, but that's not necessarily their purpose in life and i think finding a community of women who have gone through it themselves is truly life-changing whether you have people in your friend group that have gone through it maybe older people mentors aunts uncles whoever you can find please connect with them because that can be life-changing even if it's just a facebook group or even tiktok has a lot of people going through ttc and i found myself connecting with people over on tiktok try to find those people because you will be disappointed your husband won't get Get it your mom may not get it your sister your cousin your best friend may not get it and that can feel so hurtful and isolating but just know that there are women out there who are eager to connect and again everybody has their cross to bear i'm struggling with infertility but my friend is struggling with something else and my family member is struggling with something else so this can feel like a life ending sort of depression sort of failure to thrive failure to launch but this is temporary. This will not be your life forever. I will overcome this. Whether I have children or I don't, I will overcome this time in my life. I will move on with my life. And I'm happy about that. It's hopeful for me to think about that, that this is temporary. Moving on, contentment is a journey. 
God is the prize. And I love this song, it's called Daily Bread and it says, I will seek your face before I seek your hand, before the promised land. This is referring to sometimes we can treat God as just a magic genie who just grants all of our wishes, but that is not the purpose of our existence. The purpose of our existence is to have communion with him, have relationship with God, and to share that with others for his glory and to make him known across the earth. So the purpose of life is not for me to get what I want. The purpose is not for me to be rich and famous and have a beautiful, healthy family. And that is so hard for me to see sometimes because I'm so caught up in this world. And it's a daily struggle for me to remember that he is the prize. Getting a baby is not the prize here. Being with him is the prize. This life is temporary. I'm going to live hopefully 80, 90, 100 years, and then I'm going to spend eternity with him. And it's so easy for me to forget that. And I just think this is what I want. I want this. Once I have this, I'll be happy. But none of that satisfies. And once I do have a baby, I'm still going to be in a way empty and I'm still going to have longings. And I'm still going to say, well, once my kid is five years old, then I'll be happy because then he'll be in school or there will always be something. So what God is really, really teaching me right now is that contentment is a journey and it will always be something that we have to work hard at. Being content with where I am in life right now, being content with who I'm around, what I have, my successes, my riches, my environment, being content that he is with me. Like that should be all that I care about and all that I want because he provides everything and he is the ultimate source of fulfillment. And then similarly playing off of that, patience in general as a virtue has rubbed off in other areas of my life. So I have always been by nature a very like, I want it now, give it to me now. I'll do whatever I can to have it now person. And I, and I still am like that in a way, but God is definitely teaching me that timing is everything. I do believe he has a perfect time in my life for me to have a child. And I do believe that that is orchestrated and it doesn't always have to be now. Things don't always have to be right this second, whether it's work-related. Oh, I really want that brand deal. I really want more views. I really want more subscribers. I really want a baby right now so that I can move on to the next phase of life. Again, patience and contentment are all like intertwined here, but just slowing down, being in the moment, realizing God's goodness, going on a walk, and just being grateful for where I am because two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, I am living in my answered prayer requests from those times and we can so easily forget that, which is why I have a prayer journal where I write down my prayer requests and every so often I go back and I look like, wow, God, you have answered so many prayers for me and here I am doubting you, questioning you, rushing you. It's really humbling. It's really, really humbling. So still working on that contentment. That's been a big struggle for me always. And I feel like I've made a little bit of progress, but I have so much farther to go with contentment and patience. The biggest like life changing one would be the first one, which is that I can handle a lot more than I thought. I'm stronger than I thought. That one can really boost your confidence once you realize like, wow, God has really given me the strength here. Like I can actually overcome these things. I actually have one more. I actually forgot about this one. This one is huge and it plays into that. It's that my identity is not in being a mom. If you're on TikTok or even Instagram reels, you've seen those videos of people, of women holding their baby and it's like a sentimental moment. And then the text on the screen says, I finally found my purpose in life. That's amazing. And I'm so, so happy for you. <laughs> Just kidding. That is great, but you are still 100% complete right now as you are. I am still complete. I still have my purpose right now. I don't have to wait to be a mom to find my purpose. And I know those videos are with pure intentions, but it can make someone who is struggling to be a mom feel like they don't have a purpose and feel like they will never have a purpose until they're a mom. And this applies to different areas of waiting. So if I were to post a video with AJ as my husband, and it's like a video of us like hugging and being intimate. And I say, I finally found my purpose. My purpose is being a wife. For those waiting to find their spouse watching that video, that can lead you to believe that you are not worthy, that you don't have a purpose until you have a spouse. And that is just a flat out lie from the devil. That is a lie. Our only purpose 
as Christians is to glorify God and to share his goodness with the world and to live according to his will and to be like Jesus. Do the best that we can to be and act like Jesus. And that applies whether you're married, whether you have a baby, whether you're a career woman, whether you are unemployed. Your purpose is that and your purpose is not tied up in your identity, I should say. Your identity is not a wife or a mom or a coworker or a daughter. Your identity is in Christ if you're a Christian and even if you don't believe in God even if you're struggling with that or you're you you just don't identify as religious at all you are so much more than this one thing this one role in your life that oh I don't know that has always rubbed me the wrong way seeing those videos because I I just don't think it's true and I think it's a dangerous place to be in if you truly truly feel like that is your one and only purpose in life those are my thoughts there there's probably so many more that i haven't thought of yet that i will still continue to learn and i will share those with you in the vlogs to come as i realize them and as god puts them on my heart but i'm so grateful for you guys watching and listening and supporting again please give this video a thumbs up it really 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 supports my channel and subscribe if you want to see more content like this um, if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and i will get to them and don't forget to check out ritual the link will be down below such good discount and i'm excited to start ivf soon i have a couple days left of birth control and i'm so excited to be done with it and just move on to the next phase and see what god has in store for this ivf journey it's been a controversial one um, i'll link my ivf video down below where i go over how i came to this decision what i'm thinking about it um, some spiritual aspects to it so definitely check that out next and i will see you guys in the next video bye